Hey, I'm an emergency medicine physician assistant, and I'm gonna be sharing tips on how to ace your ER rotation. Your ER rotation is gonna be a lot different. It's not like family medicine at all. It's not like your psych rotation or anything like that. I remember my ER rotation, I was in Nazareth Hospital in Philadelphia. ER was actually my like eighth rotation. I was actually doing a shift that I liked too, in second shift. I was doing 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. As a PA student, everything was really early in the morning and I hated getting up. I was more of a night owl. I still am a night owl. And right now my shift is from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., which I like. I was following a PA and the PA was switching between fast track and the main ER. We got the strokes and stuff like that in the main ER and I got to help with that type of stuff. And then we also got the fast track stuff when we physically moved to a different part of the ER to see these fast track patients. They had like six fast track rooms and there was a lot of fast track stuff going on. So it was a good mix of environments. Um, I liked the shift, I liked the hours, and overall I had a great time, a great learning experience. ER rotations was one of my favorites and it was what made me determine that I want to go into emergency medicine. My first tip to you guys is that you should definitely know all of the fast track stuff. Fast track is essentially an urgent care that they build inside of the ER. Depending on who your preceptor is, you might be doing some fast track stuff throughout the day. I would say fast track includes things like sore throats, back issues, ankle sprains, or possible people thinking they fractured something. STDs, STIs, UTIs, motor vehicle accidents. A lot of people come to the ER after a minor fender bender. I'd imagine during your PA rotation here, you're gonna have to see some of these complaints. So you should definitely brush up on them and figure out what you're gonna do about them. How can you discharge a patient home and make them happy with your plan in the meantime, and then they follow up with somebody if their condition is not getting better or they come back to the ER. Not all injuries require stitches. Sometimes you could get away with some skin glue. Sometimes you could use um, something called Steri strips or sterol strips and close the wound that way. But you wanna get some good approximation. And then other times you're gonna have to stitch the wound and your preceptor will likely give you an opportunity or two or several to do some wound closure. In terms of wound closure, you should know sutures, the types of sutures, and how long they should stay in, depending on where you're placing them. For instance, something like a face, you might say three to five days, while something like an arm or a leg, you might say uh, 10 to 14 days, depending on how big the injury is and what's going on and what type of suture you're using. There are, you know, algorithms and websites that talk about this in more detail so go definitely go look that type of stuff up there are several different suturing techniques however for your er rotation as a pa student um, the only one you really need to concern yourself with should be simple interrupted sutures i wouldn't really imagine your preceptor having you do a ton of other types of sutures always important to ask with any type of wound closure stuff is tetanus vaccination status Ask the patient, some places use five years, others use, sometimes use 10. Ask the patient when their last tetanus vaccination was, and if they can't remember, just tell your preceptor they can't remember um, when it comes in terms of wound closure, because we don't want to have somebody get tetanus. If you're liking this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Be abbreviated. Use your time efficiently and use your exam skills efficiently and be abbreviated. Getting a quick, efficient patient history and then also telling your preceptor in a quick, efficient manner what's going on. A lot of the ER providers go in, they spend you know a minute or two in the room. They're not in the room for 10 minutes with the patient. And it depends. It depends on the situation, what's going on. But a lot of them are really good at going in getting the right questions and the information they need and getting the patient care started, they might always go back in and talk to the patient more. Another important skill set is to understand how to read EKGs, to be good at all the BLS, ACLS stuff that you learned in school, and to just know some of those algorithms and things like that, that's helpful.
My next tip for PA students for your ER rotation is to not be afraid and to jump in. If they say, hey, do you want to do a procedure? Or hey, do you want to go see so-and-so patient? You never say no. You always go do the stuff. You want to be eager. You want to get a good learning experience. And the way you're going to do that is by exposing yourself to a bunch of different cases and different patients and different situations. I know my preceptors were really good about saying, hey, there's a code or there's a higher acuity thing coming in. Uh, you should definitely go into the room and help out. And sometimes your preceptor is really good with giving you those opportunities. Other times you might have to, you know, ask. Preceptors also just recognize when you're out there busting your butt off and you're trying to get a good grade and you're trying to learn and you're asking some questions along the way and you're not trying to be like a know-it-all. Just go with the flow. You're a PA student. Be confident. Be competent but don't be a know-it-all. I think that will help you throughout your ER rotation. My last tip for your ER rotation, and this could be said about life, and this could be said about almost any other rotation that you have, is to be nice to everybody. That doesn't just mean the doctors or the PAs, that also means the nurses, the techs, and the scribes, because they're an integral part of our team. From my perspective as a PA, uh, my day would be horrible if I had to do all the stuff that the nurses were doing, the techs were doing, and you know, they're all saving my butt and doing all of the hard work, and I have to just go in and talk to the patient. So I have a great appreciation for my nurses that I work with. You shouldn't treat anybody um, differently just because of their job or role in the ER. The ER is a well-oiled machine, and so you just have to make sure that you treat everybody with respect and kindness, and you come in every day with some enthusiasm, and I know that that will go a long way in your ER rotation, so good luck. So to summarize, what you should do for your ER rotation is this. You should know the fast track stuff. You should try to do abbreviated physical exams and be brief with your communication. Practice and know things like simple interrupted sutures and different wound closure techniques. Always go into work confident, trying to learn, trying to get experiences, and then being nice to everyone, including the patients and staff. And I think these things will make you go a long way in your ER rotation. Just don't be afraid. Take it one day at a time. That's how I look at it. And know that as a PA student, you know, you're, you're pretty protected in what's going on. Um, you have preceptors and a lot of oversight so it's not like you're expected to be practicing medicine by yourself or anything like that take advantage of your time as a student to try to flourish i hope this video gave you guys good tips i have an updated list of tips and stuff at my website pacrazy.com um, feel free to check that out subscribe to my channel for more videos like this don't forget to hit that like button it really helps the youtube algorithm um, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you guys soon.